Hey, what's going on guys? So one question I get a lot from a whole bunch of you all is, what are my thoughts about Boruto Shippuden? And I'm just gonna say this right now. I think that's a really, really, really bad idea. Like, I think that is a terrible idea. Like on a scale from one to 10, it's a 10-10. Ten -ten. Like it's 10-10, ten -ten. that's how bad it is. And I'm not trying to bash 10-10's ten -ten's character or anything like that, though I will say, you know, wasted potential. But here's the thing, right? The moment you call a Boruto anime Boruto Shippuden, you've just opened Pandora's box. You think Boruto is a series gets hated on now? Call it Boruto Shippuden because you're gonna have so many people who are gonna immediately begin comparing it to Naruto Shippuden. You're gonna have so many people who can't get over the fact that the Naruto story is done that they're going to unleash utter hell. And here's the thing, you're already seeing it now, but I feel as if the Boruto series, in particular the manga, has gotten to a point where it's starting to find its own. It's starting to come into its own narrative. Like, we went through a period in the anime where it was all light and fluffy, and there was a bunch of slice of life stuff, and there was a lot of uh, character development those on a very slow pace. Whereas the manga kind of just, you know, snapped all the way into the story and gave us the bare basics of the story and kind of just kept moving forward and we're getting closer and closer to the whole uh, Boruto versus Kawaki conflict. But the thing is, is when you look at it, it took the manga roughly two and a half years to break out of the Naruto shadow, out of the shadow of the Naruto manga. And even then, people are still comparing the Boruto manga to the Naruto manga. When it comes to the Boruto anime, people are still saying, I like Naruto better, I like Naruto Shippuden better. Episode 50 of Boruto, everybody's just sitting at the ramen stand and they're drinking and laughing, and having a good time. Episode 50 of Naruto, like we were in the tuning exams. It was getting real, there was a lot of tension, there was a lot of conflict. Like when you start doing that, you can't win. You absolutely can't win. And the thing about that is, is when you have a series like this, you know, Boruto, in particular the anime, is reaching a very vital point. It's reaching a very vital point. Like what happens in this next year is going to determine how long this series is running on TV Tokyo. I know the ratings are there. I know that they moved it onto that uh, Sunday morning block where it can compete with some of the other shows that are coming on on Sunday morning to hit more of a younger demographic. But at the same time, you gotta look at it like this. The Boruto anime lost that primetime slot. It was running in primetime, and for a while it was actually running in the slot that Naruto Shippuden was running in. So tying that back into the central question, why it's a bad idea to call the second part of Boruto, Boruto Shippuden, you're gonna be playing with the same problem that Dragon Ball GT had. Now, I know a lot of you guys are a lot younger than me, so you don't necessarily remember Dragon Ball GT, and I'll be honest with you, I very barely remember Dragon Ball GT. Like, I remember when Funimation started doing it, I want to say like in 2000 and three, four, five Funimation started dubbing it. So when GT had its initial run, I was too young to remember it. But the thing about Dragon Ball GT is, is when it came out, a lot of people were saying, well, this isn't Dragon Ball Z. And that's something that the Boruto series has just now started to get over when people say, well, this isn't Naruto Shippuden. I really feel as if people have now gotten to a point where they're starting to accept Boruto as a story for what it is. And the moment you call it Boruto Shippuden, it's gonna open up that Pandora's box. People are automatically gonna be comparing it to all the high and low points of Naruto Shippuden, and it sets an unrealistic expectation. Now, why do you say that's an unrealistic expectation? A lot of you guys might be asking me. Well, here's the reason why. When you do something like that, you're essentially trying to defeat time. And here's the thing about time, you can never defeat it. Lightning does not strike twice in the same place very often for a reason, because it's one of those things where everything has to line up almost perfectly. It has to be the perfect storm in order for lightning to strike twice in the same way. Now, again, I know if you wanna get into the science behind it, it's probably more possible, but you guys get what I'm trying to say. Now, when it comes to time, a big part of the thing is that so many people grew up with Naruto's story and a lot of people started the story with Naruto Shippuden. Naruto Shippuden, 
acted as a gateway anime for a lot of anime fans I, I know that some people will dispute that but I mean I've kind of I at least in my experience especially going to a lot of conventions that's a lot of the feel that I've gotten is that a lot of people Naruto as a series is what kind of drove them into going into different anime it's had that kind of kind of impact and here's the thing like if you are a kid or a teenager and you're watching the Naruto story and you're experiencing it in real time the Boruto anime is never going to give you those same feelings. You're never going to be on the, the edge. Like, I remember for me, right? Like, I remember when the chapters were coming out. I used to wake up at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning just to be able to read the chapters when they're getting released on Thursdays before the whole controversy happened where the scans were getting uh, given to us on the weekends and sometimes on Wednesdays because people were getting caught. And I remember the pit in my stomach reading the chapter where Jiraiya died. I remember the pit in my stomach thinking that Kakashi had died protecting Choji. And when you have stuff like that where you have to wait on pins and needles for a week, when you have stuff like that, it stays with you forever. You remember stuff a lot differently than how it was. Now, take that and compare it to somebody who binge watched the anime or binge read the manga and got everything back to back to back to back it doesn't hit you as hard because you're not creating the same uh, memories I'm not knocking anybody who necessarily did anything like that I, trust me I'm not knocking that but at the same time you have to look at it from this perspective the Boruto story can never match what Naruto did not in terms of the impact on those fans but with this new generation if you call it something else it allows Boruto to further explore its identity. It allows Boruto as a story to continue to make it into being something different. Like, I, I think one of the problems that the Boruto anime struggled with is I feel like Kishimoto gave them the perfect groundwork for Boruto's character. Like, if you forget everything you know about the Boruto anime, it's like the new arc with Sumiri and the uh, tuning exams retelling and all that and what's going on with Mitsuki, which I haven't seen, by the way. I have not seen the new arc. I'm behind on the anime. I'm like on episode 63 or 64. It's right when Sasuke is about to take uh, Boruto to uh, Momoshiki's dimension so they can try and rescue Naruto. I think the episode's called uh, Sasuke's Trump Call. So I'm really behind on the anime. But here's the, here's the thing about that, right? If you forget all of that and you just look at what Kishimoto wrote Boruto's character as in the Naruto New Era project so go look at Boruto and the what is it the Naruto Gaiden manga when you look at Boruto in the Naruto Boruto the movie and you just see what Kishimoto did for Boruto's character he was a kid who didn't understand the role that his father had in the village he just knew that he had his father growing up and then all of a sudden his dad took on a really important job he's never really there he's never seen the progress that his son who is a generational talent you can argue has made where he's learned three changes in chakra nature as a gaining and that's something that got said in the in the uh, Boruto movie about the way but when you take all that in in there and it's that lack of understanding then we see how naruto unleashes a huge amount of power to protect the village and then the light bulb goes off on boruto what you see with that is an opportunity you have an opportunity to explore the naruto world through the eyes of a character who doesn't know what the audience knows you have an opportunity for us to see our favorite characters like Naruto and Sasuke through a new set of eyes to gain different perspective of them and I think that that was very genius of Kishimoto's part because it allows him and whoever writes the story so in this case Kodachi to reveal new information about these characters that we wouldn't have been able to see and the thing about Boruto that I found very interesting when that movie came out is he was so drastically different from Naruto I feel like in chapter 700 in chapter 700 to Naruto while a lot of people like I remember when the chapters came out I used to watch uh, Sawyer Seven Mage I used to watch uh, Four Never World I used to watch King of Lightning and a few other people but I used to watch their videos and one of the things that got me very irritated was like a lot of people like oh I just love how Boruto was painting on the Hokage faces and it's just a nice throwback and you know Boruto seems so much like Naruto where he's like I want to go play pranks and tricks and look at 
me. I want all the attention. I'm just a pretty powder puff princess, flaming warrior, super ramen bowl eating Uzumaki ramen noodle doodle, stroking that Uchiha. Ooh, ooh. Like, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay? I totally get it. Boruto was meant to be an homage, it's supposed to tie everything back to chapter one, but I hated that. I hated it because I was like, wait, you've already done this. Give us something new. Like, I don't want to see this crap anymore. I don't even want to see it. And so when the uh, Boruto uh, showed up in the Naruto Gaiden and all of a sudden there was tension between Naruto and Boruto where everybody's just focused on Sarada, I was like, ooh, I like this. Now. This is the thing. The Boruto anime completely moved away from that. It completely moved away, away from that. Yes, with the whole thing where Boruto had daddy issues, where Boruto was doing that whole thing like in the uh, Austin Powers stuff where like, daddy wasn't there. Daddy doesn't care. Didn't take me to the fair. Daddy, 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 daddy. I get it. Boruto had daddy issues. Totally get it. And it got repetitive. It got really, really old. And yet at the same time, you can't say Boruto has all these daddy issues and then in the earlier arcs like in the uh, Hidden Mist arc in the arc with Samiri and all these other arcs like Boruto's using talk no jutsu like, like if you go back if you go back to the Boruto movie that's what I say look at Kishimoto's adaptation for the character when you go back to the Boruto movie when you go back to Naruto Gaiden there is nothing in there that makes you believe that Boruto's gonna talk no jutsu. Like, he's not gonna do it. Like, Boruto as a character is selfish, he's arrogant, he's spoiled, like the Kishimoto version. And that's the thing, I liked it because it was different. It was so drastically different than Naruto. And in the Boruto movie, you watched him evolve, you watched him grow. And with the whole thing with the anime, it's just like, wait a second, this is something Naruto would have done. He, Naruto would have said, no, 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 no. You sit down, you listen up while Papa Naruto talks to you. Grab those ninja Bibles. Now we're not gonna go to the chapter of Uzumaki. Instead, we're gonna go to the chapter of the pervy sage. I want you to flip to scroll number six, and I want you to go past the giant sexy jutsu section, and we're gonna be talking about he's my friend. And you know, like I get it, all right? Like I, I totally get it, I totally get it. You know, like Naruto, his whole thing was, you know, talking out with his enemies and everything. And I, I'm, I know that's going to be blasphemous because there's more to Naruto's characters, a lot more to it than that. But the thing is, it's like, I feel like Studio Period focused so much on the whole, I'm going to talk and make you see the error of your ways stuff with the Naruto character when they were trying to do Boruto. Because the thing is, it's like the version that Kishimoto did wouldn't have been trying to talk it out with those guys from the head mist arc. He wouldn't he wouldn't be trying to, you know, drill it into like uh the kid, I can't remember his name, the guy who was already tuning from the head mist arc. He wouldn't be trying to drill it in his head like, hey, you're doing the wrong thing. Boruto wouldn't have understood it. And he would have been stubborn and stuck in his ways. But at the same time, I get why they went that route, because this is essentially a kid's show. And so you have to have that main character who is you know at least talking to the audience by talking to the different people he's interacting with saying this isn't the right way to do things like you know there are consequences for your actions but if you uh work really hard and you do the right thing doing the right thing isn't always easy but you can start that path like, i get what they're trying to do i get why boruto talked it out with so many people like, i get why Boruto is so expressive and speaking his feelings in so many different ways because they're trying to convey those different life lessons and everything that the character has but I, I really feel as if again that's that's giving us something we've already had so where that goes with Boruto Shippuden where that goes with it all of a sudden you cheapen what is the car organization because people they're already comparing them to the Akatsuki even though there's something different. Like their introduction is completely different than the Akatsuki, it's completely different. Because when you look at it, like we slowly got to build up into the hierarchy of the Akatsuki with Car. We've already gotten like the inner and the outer members, they're cloaked in mystery. And then we got a rogue inside of the whole organization with Kashi and Koji, a guy who's doing his own thing, who's coming off like a chaos agent. 
that's something different. And if you say this is Boris or Shaputin, people will say, well, the Kotsky did this. The Akatsuki did it this way. Car can never top that. It can never top that. And so I say that to say, calling this Boruto Shippuden, this is terrible. This is a terrible idea. Because again, you're, you're just opening yourself up for failure. Like you're failing before you even launch. And there's gonna be unrealistic expectations. People gonna say, well, Naruto Shippuden lasted 500 episodes. So Boruto Shippuden should be 500 episodes. You shouldn't do it. You shouldn't do it. Like, in fact, you should just drop the whole Naruto part from the title altogether. Make this Boruto story. Do what the early parts of the story focused on, which is when we first introduced the character, he said, my old man's story's done. This is my story. Those are big words. And I really feel as if Kodachi, I really feel as if Studio Period, I feel as if they got cold feet and said, we need to keep trying to remake the Naruto elements that made Naruto popular and not focus on what makes Boruto special and the fact that Boruto is different. And every time they've given us something different, I feel as if there's been a lot of excitement. Like when Kawaki got unveiled and we saw that whole thing with the karma stuff, like there was a surge in popularity. Like when Al came back, there was a lot more conversation. Like I saw more Boruto on my Twitter feed. I saw more Boruto on the different social media sites I go to. And on one hand, I know, you know, Yonko Productions made this video where, you know, he kind of rallied against everything that Boruto's done. But I like the idea that, you know, it's starting to do something different. But again, just, you know, doing the whole thing with uh, Boruto Shippuden, I feel as if, if you do that, you're essentially going to be proving what Yonko Production said is true, which is you're just doing this series as a cash grab. You're doing it as a way to continue to milk the Naruto story, when in reality, you should be focusing on doing something completely different. You should do something completely different to the point where, yes, it's still set in the Naruto world, but it's something that stands on its own. Boruto is a series right now. I don't feel as if it can stand on its own, though I do think that it is making, feel as if it's making its way towards being able to get to that point. But I mean, those are my thoughts on this. This is a bit longer than you know, my usual videos where I'm kind of talking to you guys. And a big part of the reason is, is like calling something Boruto Shippuden, that's a very, very complex subject. You know, this is something I almost wanted to bring a guest on for. and. I might revisit this topic with a guest. I really might do that. But, you know, I just want to kind of talk to you guys like, you know, just me talking to you because I wanted to be able to show you why this is such a complex thing. And I wanted to use something from the past to show you why calling it Boruto GT, or excuse me, Boruto, <laughs> Boruto GT, uh, calling it Boruto Shippuden is akin to the whole Dragon Ball GT debacle. But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, share. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Have an incredible day, guys.